Good morning, everyone. Thanks uh, for joining us for this important update. Uh, we're here to give uh, the public and the media um, an update on the Elmwood Emergency Shelter Community. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the team that we are putting together to successfully manage this new facility and give an update on the timeline. Um, we're going to hear from uh, a number of uh, key partners in us getting to today's announcements. Um, and they uh, are visible there on the screen with me. I want to say thank Carrie um, Duquette Hoffman, who is uh, from the Agency of Human Services and is uh, representing uh, the commissioner, Jenny Samuelson, uh, has been a, a key partner uh, providing funding and, and other support in getting today. And uh, we're also joined by Michael Mondi, the executive director of Champlain Housing Trust, um, the nonprofit that has long been uh, the leading housing partner um, for the city uh, since Champlain Housing Trust was, was part of a city, uh, part of the city and a creation of the Community and Economic Development Office uh, decades ago now. Um, we also have a number of members of the CEDO team here, Director Brian Pine, and then um, our Special Assistant to End Homelessness, Sarah Russell, who will um, uh, close out today with a uh, kind of placing the work at the Elmwood Avenue uh, shelter within the larger context of our um, efforts to address, address and end homelessness uh, here in Burlington. Um, and we also hear uh, about uh, the physical progress on the site from Samantha Dunn, who is our assistant CEDO director for Community Works. I'm going to kick things off uh, and, and get hand things over to the team momentarily. Um, uh, we, the Elmwood Emergency Shelter commun Community, is um, a initiative that began uh, less than a year ago, last December. We announced that this was a municipal goal when announcing a 10 point housing action plan. And, um, oops, I think we're trying to bring up the, uh, the plan here. The creation of the Elmwood uh, sh shelter community was one of uh, one point of that 10 point plan. To, to say just a moment about the broader effort. Uh, the way I see our housing challenges, the long seeing our housing challenge is this. We, we, uh, if we are gonna make good on the promise of housing as a human right, um, we need to do two big things. We need to build a lot more housing. I think fundamentally our housing affordability and availability challenges um, are a supply problem. We just haven't built nearly enough housing of all types, permanently affordable housing as well as, as uh, units that serve the broader housing market. Um, and we need to bring a special focus to the challenge of homelessness because supply efforts alone there, um, while very important, uh, will uh, not uh, on their own uh, address the uh, unacceptable level of chronic homelessness that we, we see in the community. And um, one thing that, and, and that, that, that level of chronic homelessness right now is uh, at a very high point for this community. We have gone from a low, this is a, this is a metric that we uh, attempt to measure um, uh, and track uh, very carefully. And we saw that number get down to as low as 35 people uh, in the years preceding, uh, the low point preceding the pandemic. It is now, the latest figure I've seen is that there are over 220 people who are chronically homeless in this community. And the, the uh, emergent Elmwood Avenue shelter community was envisioned as part of a, uh, a strategy um, to really bring down that number of chronically homeless individuals. I wanna emphasize that it is just part of the strategy. And uh, there, if all we were doing uh, was uh, investing in, in these shelter pods, I think it would be uh, uh, would not be a successful effort. Um, but uh, what Sarah is going to speak to at the end of the pre this presentation is the way that this fits into a broader effort to redouble our our efforts to uh, uh, to, to eliminate homelessness and to make broader investments in the community infrastructure that um, 
other uh, that, that is going to get us there and that other communities have proven um, can get can effectively uh, end homelessness. But what we're going to start with is talking about uh, this this specific project, which has been um, a matter of major public interest since the announcement last last December. Uh, what we can share today is um, two big things. One, that we are on track to uh, open this facility and uh, begin to house uh, people in this facility be before the winter. And Samantha Dunn will um, give some details of that on the ground construction progress because we are in construction on this effort. And when we open, our other major announcement today is that when we open, um, we will be doing so in partnership with the Champlain Housing Trust, which we have reached an agreement with to serve as the property manager uh, for um, this, this critical uh, new facility. It's been a matter of a lot of public discussion that, uh, that, this, that, we had, that we have been working towards this for some time. There are a lot of critical issues uh, to work through. This is something new. We are trying to uh, create a different kind of shelter, and very, very intentionally so. The belief is that um, what uh, we will be bringing into being here will um, uh, will be more effective. Will 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 address a part of the homelessness challenge, the unhoused challenge that we have not had the resources to fully address before. It will be a low barrier shelter. It will be a shelter that uh, we hope and believe will allow us to reach a group of people who uh, the existing shelter system and permanent housing system um, have not been able to effectively uh, support. Um, and it is uh, a um, facility that is going to have a very high level of supportive services available on the site so that from the time that someone begins to live on a temporary basis uh, in this facility, uh, we are um, really doing an uh, excellent coordinated job, uh, doing everything we can to help those individuals find permanent housing, find if they need it, um, effective drug uh, or mental health treatment services uh, to link um, these individuals, uh, in some cases up, up with uh, get, re returning to employment. Our shelters in the past have attempted to do to reach all these goals. Um, we've never been able to mount this kind of coordinated uh, multi-agency um, effort to, to um, focus a, a great deal of resources on getting people this kind of help. And um, I'm now going to turn over the, the presentation to Brian Pine and uh, to Michael Monty, who will say uh, say some more about the details of the shelter community. So Brian, why don't you go next? Thank you, Mayor. I, I wanna just say that the um, the place we are today is, is really a unique response to today's conditions. Um, the fact that we are supposed to be post pandemic, but we, we saw the shelter support to those who are experiencing homelessness pretty much shift from a, a shelter place-based approach with congregate shelters where people would bunk in, in shared rooms with lots of other people. During the pandemic, all of that shifted over to a hotel motel um, program. And with the loss of, of uh, uh, funding to continue that program, we as a community needed to come up with a very fast, prompt response to what we anticipate um, is a significant need, which as we go further into this, um, others will elaborate on the, on the need and the numbers around the data. It shows that the demand for um, for shelter for, from the unhoused in our community has has grown to a pretty significant number. Um, we have essentially brought together, um, I believe, the the you know the supports that this community has available and can offer to people to go from living outside, living perhaps in a tent or somewhere else, perhaps in a doorway, um, which we can see in our community if we spend any time um, uh, walking around uh, to someplace that offers safety and security and stability in addition to being paired with services that will provide hopefully a path forward and a bridge from being unhoused to, to stabilizing their lives and moving into 
um, housing, supportive housing, permanent housing is, is certainly the goal. Um, this community is, is um, uh, going to be, as the mayor said, going to be up and running um, this before winter. We expect sometime in November. Um, as this slide shows, it's, it's 30 climate controlled modular shelters, individual units, if you will. Um, they're, they're very small, but they will provide what people need in terms of um, you know, climate control, so adequate heat in the cold weather, adequate cooling in the hot weather, um, for both individuals and five of the shelters will serve um, two people, couples or, or you know, someone who has a, a personal care attendant that needs to be with them. Um, and we'll be providing a bathhouse, full service. Um, people will be, be able to do their own laundry because there'll be laundry facilities on site, offices and, and sort of guest services, or you might think of it as a community space for, for accessing services and having meetings with service providers and, going over paperwork for benefits and ensuring that someone is, is staying sort of in the system, if you will, so they can move from um, being unhoused to being housed. And um, what we wanna point out is that the Community Resource Center was initially intended for um, co-location with the shelter, but, but over time we've really determined that a, a great, an even better strategy is to expand feeding Chittenden and, to, and that, that service is being provided to the community now at Feeding Chittenden on North Minsky Avenue is going very well, high utilization, it's serving the needs and, and rather than co-located on Elmwood, the, the service center at Elmwood will serve Elmwood residents, so it'll serve guests of the shelter, but it won't be available to the whole community. So that's a change and a pivot. And we responded to somewhat to community concerns, honestly, about that and whether that was the right strategy. And so we look more carefully, more closely at it and we, worked with CVOEO and CHT on the concept of, uh, of feeding chitin and serving as the, the host for that. So um, service coordination, Sarah will talk more about that because that's really a critical piece. It's not just enough to provide a safe, warm or cool space, but it's, it's gotta be paired with services and she'll talk about that. But um, Mayor, am I handing it off to Michael or is that um, for you to do? Well, I, I will just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bridge here just to, to um, Share how excited I am uh, to be able to make this announcement with Michael Monty today. I'm grateful uh, I am for the partnership um, from Champlain Housing Trust. Champlain Housing Trust has uh, literally an international reputation for being uh, one of the best housing organizations in the globe. We're very fortunate to have them here uh, headquartered in Burlington and doing so much of their work in Burlington. Um, they have they have been so effective uh, that um, the organization has expanded dramatically and is uh, communities across the state um, are uh, look to them uh, to, 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 to play a role. And we, we, we uh, rely on them to be developers uh, and being the, the main developer of uh, new uh, affordable housing. And, and we have many other conversations going on with them about uh, other elements of the 10 point plan that we that we need their partnership as as well um they have also though distinguished themselves as one of the most competent uh, uh property managers uh, one of the most competent uh and successful organizations at actually operating um uh, not, not just affordable housing but affordable housing that um is targeted at, at uh, housing the formerly homeless and basically what I am in a long-winded way saying is they are the perfect partner for the city in this effort. It's a partner that we uh, hoped we would be able to join with uh, from the beginning. And um, we very much appreciate that we, that CHD has worked with us uh, to uh, knock down a, a range of, of issues so that it was possible to get to this announcement today. Uh, Michael, thank you. And um, turn it over to you to share anything you'd like uh, about uh, how we're going to, how we're going to, we're going to succeed here. I think you are muted. Yeah, thank you both. And I appreciate those very kind words. This is where you should, I should wave to you and walk off the stage uh, after uh, uh, um, those, those great comments about our capacity and our ability to do this. I just briefly want to say CHT's uh, mission is to provide permanent affordable housing. Uh, in uh, Chittenden, Franklin, Grandal County. And we have about 2,500 apartments we manage we also do home ownership. We also do counseling and education. 
Uh, we also do farm worker uh, loans uh, for ho housing for farm workers, uh, loans for people to do rehab of homes. And at this point, about 136 uh, people strong, I think uh, doing some, uh, some great work uh, in the community and uh, through COVID uh, and now with the resources, uh, very busy uh, as an organization um, and proud of that, feeling good about the work that we are doing and, the, and the, our capacity to sort of do this work. Uh, probably a decade ago, we opened up a first motel to serve folks who are homeless. Uh, during COVID, we operated a second motel to provide folks uh, isolation and quarantine who are homeless as well. But throughout the last five so years have assisted steps to end domestic violence for their new shelter, which is much better than what they used to have before, opened up the Bel Air and the Beacon Apartments, which has a higher range of services in cooperation with the community health centers in Burlington. Uh, recently opened up Susan's Place with 76 apartments for folks who are homeless. In Franklin County, Vista Apartments, uh, 15 spectrums being served there as well as domestic violence folks and as well as the um, helping out with um, Tim's place and the redevelopment of that SRO. Over the next uh, uh, year or so, we have 100 new apartments coming on who will serve folks who are homeless and about 20%, as it says, of our apartments now are serving folks who are houseless. And that's, uh, that's a part of the work that we do. Again, we, we think of ourselves as homelessness to home ownership. And so we, we provide a range of services I think going into and thinking about the pods, we feel like based upon that range of experiences, the different types of folks that we have seen, knowing the different types of people who are houseless, not everyone, this is not one type of person. There are maybe little groups of types of people, but often enough, there is a range of services and needs. We look forward to working with CVOEO on that, uh, on making sure people are served. We have a strong team here in terms of uh, management strong team in terms of our HR capacity and to move people into the positions. A little of a hesitancy is the hesitancy of the workforce. And we feel like we've been able to overcome some of that and be able to bring that now uh, and the capacity to do the work. And we are gonna be hiring a lot of people. So if anybody on this call wants to come and do some work at the pods, let me know. Um, but um, you know, working through, I think the team at CETO ensuring that the most important thing is that people have an opportunity to be housed uh, on a temporary basis and that it is safe and secure and supported and that people can move into permanent um, uh, housing uh, out of the pond shelter and into something that is stable uh, and long-term. And that's really our broad mission. Uh, and that is how we will try to uh, work through the management issues that we begin to sort of, we're still developing and, and, and creating. And I think uh, pretty close to sort of settling all the different pieces and parts of those things. Um, um, again, when we bring on managers and assistant managers, we'll fine tune those things. And uh, we hope to be able to be up and running uh, before, before the holidays. How's that? Uh, so uh, that's our goal. Uh, and thank you, Mayor and uh, team. I think with that, I can stop. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, one thing I do wanna note that um, is an important part of uh, the conversation that we've been having with uh, with with CHT, and which is uh, uh, um, some of the more work uh, is is coming on this. But uh, both the city um, and Champlain Housing Trust um, are uh, committed to the idea that this is, as uh, Brian mentioned, this is a facility that we need right now, given the acute pressures that we are facing right now. Um, we are seeing greater levels of chronic homelessness, greater levels of people sleeping outside than we have ever seen before. And uh, we have a tough road ahead as we know that um, the state is likely to continue to uh, cut back from the hotel and motel programs that were set up during the pandemic and that that may put new pressures on the, on the housing and the shelter system that we have in place. So this is a facility we need now, but we do not intend this to be a permanent facility. And we've been clear about that from the start. Um, we, the city and uh, CHT are in conversations and expect to negotiate, develop, um, an agreement over the coming months 
uh, that would formalize uh, the idea that um, ultimately, approximately three years from now, um, that this site would change from being a emergency shelter to part of the permanent housing solution and that this would be uh, that the, the CHT would develop uh, permanent affordable housing on this site with the city's support. Uh, we are in the early stages of that conversation. There's a lot of details to work out um, there. Uh, this is a property that the Public Works Commission has a, a formal statutory role in, and there are parking issues in this part of the city that would have to be thought through and considered uh, before you could have that kind of permanent change in use. There are all sorts of questions about um, what a project uh, on this site would, would look like. And you know, I, I know when you start talking about projects that immediately raises uh, concerns um, uh, and questions, at least in the minds of, of neighbors. Um, and uh, I want those neighbors to hear that, you know, we're going to be talking to you as we uh, start to, we're, we're at the beginning of this process, and as we start to develop that long-term plan for the property, uh, there's going to be a lot more community conversation uh, about it. Um, but I do, at the same time, did want to, at the start of the, the, you know, the public start of this partnership on this property, thought it was important to, um, uh, to to share that news as well. Um, with that, uh, I think uh, next, um, let's go to Samantha Dunn, uh, again, our assistant director for community works, which means she is basically the city's real estate developer in some ways. She says uh, the, the, the projects that the city is responsible for getting built itself. Um, she is the lead on, she's a part of a new member of the team, still been with us uh, less than a year and um, is, is a lead on uh, getting this um, community uh, constructed, which is not a, you know, it's not as complicated as building a whole building, but there's same time, there's a lot to it. So Samantha, what can you tell us about where we stand with the construction project? Sure. I think as anyone who's um, driven by Elmont Ave can see that the site is under construction, which is very exciting. And for some of us that work on this every day, it maybe has felt like a long time, but this timeline is a little bit just to remind us that uh, the mayor announced this concept uh, late in or in the middle of, of December. Um, it was in March that a site was selected and approved uh, by the city council. Um, we then uh, you know, went in for a conditional use of permit from the design review board, um, got that permit, went through the appeal period um, and started construction all in about five months. So while it is a temporary um, facility, it required sort of all the permitting uh, of a permanent facility. That's the process because we, our city didn't have zoning for a temporary facility. So um, as someone who's worked with Michael in the past on developing, developing the, you know, the permanent affordable housing, this, you know, this is a very fast timeline and really exciting um, to see work happening on the site. Um, so it started last month. We're making uh, new water and sewer line connections. Um, that will hopefully serve whatever happens on the site in the future. Just this morning, we were able to remove an unknown uh, fuel tank from the city uh, through the fast work of um, great team members on our construction team and at the state. Um, so those kinds of things are ongoing. The site um, underground work, all the conduit being run for the shelters is all the, happening all underground is um, will be complete next week. We're going to get a new uh, coat of asphalt and then be ready to start, you know, everything we're bringing on the site sits on top of it. Um, so we'll be ready to start that work. Um, we've got 25 of the pallet shelters that are scheduled to arrive on the site uh, on October 10th. Uh, there's a crew coming with them that will assemble them in a couple of days. Um, we'll be uh, those community structures uh, arriving hopefully uh, early in November. Um, and then our final five shelters um, sometime before the end of the year. As Michael said, I think before the holidays is, is our goal. Um, you know, would we have liked to open sooner? Yeah, like we wanted to open in July, but I think when we, when you look at everything that needed to be accomplished, uh, we're, we're moving still at a very uh, quick pace and so excited to have CHT as a partner as we put the site together to make sure that it is gonna work well um, for them, work well for the residents and work well for the neighbors. 
So I think with that, we can maybe go to the site plan. Um, and so this is a, a nice rendered site plan and I'll talk a little bit of, about the colors, but the first thing on, on the right side of the image is Elmwood Ave. Um, the, the large rectangle on the upper right is going to be the community space. You'll see there's solar panels on the roof. We were um, successful in securing uh, funding from v -Light for those solar panels on both the community center and the bathhouse, which is the other larger rectangle. Those uh, both of those buildings have been um, designed and will uh, basically operate as net zero. There's no fossil fuels on the site. We've been working closely with Efficiency Vermont and BED to um, bring these kinds of things even to a temporary project. Um, so those are the, the larger squares, the dark line that runs sort of to the right of the um, bathhouse and up into the community center is the new fence that will be added. We've heard talking with um, other communities who have successfully implemented these types of shelters that having the site be fully secure so the staff is able to monitor exactly uh, who is coming in and out was very important. So that's where that new fence will happen. And then the white boxes that you see are, are the 30 shelters um, that will be on the site. The color um, is the actual color. We're working closely with Duncan Wisniewski um, and some artists to start to realize place making on the site. There's a special uh, product design specifically for going down on asphalt. And so this is the concept for bringing color, creating some neighborhoods and pedestrian streets on the site. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, how people can help with that. And I think next, yep, we have just some, these are Jay, the- Before you yeah. go off the site plan, can you just, um, because I know there's some lingering questions about this and the decision that has been made hasn't reached everybody. One of, one of the, you know, uh, there's a lot of community discussions um, during the permitting process uh, in the lead up to the start of construction um, uh, about this plan. And one of the, consistent messages that we heard uh, was concern about co-locating the uh, shelter community with what we call the, the community resource center, which was kind of a, a, day, uh, a facility that's open during the daytime um, that is intended to support people who are unhoused and, and uh, provide a range of services for them there. The original plan was to have both the shelter and the, and the Community Resource Center co-located on this site. Uh, the, there was a lot of community concern raised about that and whether that would um, you know, uh, contribute to magnify, um, create uh, challenges with the, the, the surrounding community. And we heard that and what you what we are still keeping a common building, but that building will only be um, accessible, uh, usable uh, by uh, people who are, are living on the site as, as well as the staff and the, uh, the various social services that are helping to, to provide supports, much of which will happen in, in, in that building. So the purpose, it's, there's still a need for the structure itself and it remains, but that function is going to stay uh, at its current location where it's uh, working successfully um, on uh, farther east at the feeding Chittenden facility. Yes. Yep, that's right. So this community building, as the mayor mentioned, is really to serve the, the community of the site, um, as well as all of the service providers. There'll be food um, delivered through this site, washing ability to meet with medical professionals, all, all types of service providers. It does also have space to, um, and we'll talk a little bit maybe with Sarah about this, but the intention of this site is to run um, along with the community. So there's space here for members of the community to meet with staff, uh, members of the neighboring community to meet with staff and members of this Elmwood shelter community to meet together. So there's space for that to happen in that building as well. Um, so the other smaller common building just has six um, full bathrooms in it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Samantha. Um, so these um, are the shelters that are being um, designed specifically for this project and built for the project by a local um, business called Up and This. They got their start at Generator. Um, we're building down on Pine Street and, and have um, recently opened a new factory in Johnson as they've expanded. Um, it's a really great opportunity to partner with a local business and think about how these structures can be used um, 
both to serve us in this current crisis at the, of um, unhoused, um, but into the future. And these have been designed with that in mind that they may continue to serve the city in a different capacity. These um, are adaptable and could be a pop-up cafe or you know some kind of um, small business uh, somewhere in a park. So um, that's a very exciting collaboration. The majority of the shelters, if you go to the next slide, Samantha, um, are from um, Pallet. This is a company based on the West Coast that patented this design of um, shelters really to respond to emergencies. They have um, very, it's definitely a company worth checking out of uh, um, amazing models about who they employ and how they do the work and how they've designed these shelters. They're meant to, um, they can be erected, they pack flat, they're going to all come on a truck. Um, and then one shelter can be erected in about four hours. It just needs uh, a power connection that provides that heating, cooling, um, and lighting. There's some great stories. We've been able to see these in operation, hear from people who were able to access them and how um, life-changing th this access to this kind of shelter has been. So very excited um, to have these. And we just found out this week um, something else exciting that um, Pallet just finished um, testing and final design on a um, more um, climate friendly version for the Northeast. We knew these could operate in our climate. Uh, spent a lot of time talking to folks in Madison, Wisconsin that had these up operating last winter, um, but they've just finished a um, design that will have substantially more insulation in them. Um, and so Burlington will be the first place that those get installed working with Efficiency Vermont. We were doing some quick math and that added insulation will save us about $600 a year per shelter. Um, so very exciting and excited to be in partnership with um, Burlington Electric Department to help fund the additional costs of, of that. So that had to add that in, that was just happened in the last 24 hours. Um, community engagement on this um, project has been intense. It's been important. Um, as soon as we um, got approval from City Council to use the Elmwood site, we began reaching out to neighbors, um, had quite um, a number of community uh, meetings open to neighbors to answer questions um, and address concerns through um, April, May, and June. Um, met with the NPA a couple of times. Um, those were challenging meetings that just I'll say, to be honest, for anyone who attended them, I think they were very useful. We were able to hear concerns and respond to them. And that feels really good. I don't, I know there are still concerns and um, people, not everybody is happy, but really exciting to have been able to hear those and respond. Um, as we move forward uh, with CHT as a partner, there'll be a new um, committee forming um, that will include staff and residents and members, neighbors and other members of the community um, that will be engaged around making this successful, being good neighbors. How can we, how can we work together to make this a successful site? Before that, we will have an opportunity to bring um, volunteers, people who are interested onto the site to start to implement some of those colors that you saw, um, put getting color down onto the pavement. We've got design um, work happening for the fence, getting color on the shelters was something important that we heard from folks with lived experience about the site. Um, so if you're interested in any of the opportunities to engage either on that committee or as a volunteer, um, you can reach out to CETA. We've got a list of folks already um, and would love to have you included. I think with that, I'm passing it to Carrie, unless, Mayor, you want to talk any more about development. I, well, I just want to say thank you, Samantha. Great, great work. You're right. To I can't think of a Vermont project that involved permitting and new construction that I've ever been involved in that gets uh, get built um, and open in, in less than a year from the time of conception. And uh, it's, um, I, I saw some reference to there being like lots of delays. This is like the least delayed project that Vermont's ever seen in some ways. So um, uh, great work. Um, the next, uh, next I, I do wanna, I, we, we would have, we would not be moving forward and, and able to execute on this kind of timeline with, uh, uh, without the help of the Agency of Human Services. Um, uh, this project has been um, of 
uh, has had the interest of, of the, the secretary herself, Jenny Samuelson, who's been a great partner to Burlington on so many fronts. Uh, really, I got to know Jenny and start to work with her uh, during the pandemic um, in our COVID response. And that kind of partnership has carried uh, right into her promotion um, to be the head of the agency, this huge agency, the state's by far the largest agency. Um, and uh, we appreciate the funding support as well as just the commitment to an understanding that this is a critical community resource and um, I really appreciate having a, a member of, of the administration and the agency here so that we can say that. Thank you publicly. Um, and I will turn it over to Carrie Duquette Hoffman to share anything you'd like to about, uh, about this announcement, today's announcements. Hi, thank you so much. And um, I, I agree that um, this project has been a key um, interest of Secretary Samuelson's and she's extremely excited to see it go forward. Um, I, I would just like to, on behalf of the agency, thank the providers and the city for the um, work that's happened to come together around this tough endemic problem, the creativity, collaboration, and perseverance is deeply appreciated. As as we all know, housing has been a problem in Vermont for decades, but the pandemic has really highlighted how uh, both we have this amazing ability to adapt, which we're seeing in this project, and um, we have such a need in our community. There's not enough housing. The housing is too expensive across the income spectrums, but especially this is the case for lower income Vermonters. Um, and as we know, housing for those who have multiple barriers to social determinants of health becomes almost impossible to find and sustain. Um, this project is a creative endeavor that responds both to best, best practices around housing and health in the country and to the learning that the city did over the course of the pandemic. The Agency of Human Services is committed to working with providers um, to make a, to a sustainable plan to house the most vulnerable Vermonters going forward. We know that this will look different than the transitional housing program that we currently have. And we look forward to partnering in more creative ways to figure out what our path forward looks like and appreciate this piece of the equation. And I think I am passing it along to the tireless efforts of um, Sarah Russell next. Uh, on the way, I'll just intercept to say uh, th thank, thank you again. Uh, we look forward to those continued conversations and partnership as well. Um, I, I, and we will have uh, kind of Sarah sort of uh, uh, closing us out here. I really think it's important to get Sarah's broader update and to understand um, the larger context uh, uh, that this and the larger work that this uh, shelter community is, is one piece of. Um, you know, on if, if all we were doing was building this, it would be significant. Um, we have, by our best estimates, approximately 60, 70 people sleeping outside right now on any given night. Um, you know, this has the potential to, put, to cut that uh, number, really tragic, problematic number um, in, in half uh, on, its, on its own. Um, but, uh, really, uh, I, I, I understand the comments I've heard some, some wondering, you know, what kind of impact this is going to have and whether uh, it's really going to make a positive difference. If you just look at it in isolation, if this were all we do, we were doing, uh, you could imagine how these beds would quickly become full and, uh, you know, what have we, other than helping those specific people, have we really created systemic change? And that's fair. We need to do much more than this. We do need to create systemic change. We need our housing system. We need a lot more, a lot more housing. I do I'm, at every opportunity think we need to uh, communicate and understand that the housing challenges, the very high and increasing cost of housing that Vermonters are facing is a supply problem. We have made it too hard to build housing. Um, and there is a, there is more, it is not just supply that uh, results in people being homeless and staying homeless. There are other issues that need to be worked through and you really need a, a, a community effort of many stakeholders working, understanding and really developing uh, uh, solutions on a person by person basis um, to really in a sustained way, 
um, get everyone the help that is needed and bring down the number of chronically homeless people we have living in this community to effectively end homelessness. And that is our goal. It's a very ambitious goal. I know it's a lot of goal that some, a lot of people think is, is sort of, uh, you know, uh, overly optimistic and uh, question whether we should really set the goal there. Um, I think it's the right moral goal. I think it's the, the goal the community expects from us. I tell you, having been in this job for a decade, whether I'm talking to kids or older people, homeless, there's an enormous community discomfort with anybody being homeless in this community. There's an expectation that the city and the state work together, federal government, and make change here. And you know, this is not a problem that we always had. This, homelessness is a, somewhat a modern phenomenon. It's, uh, it's a result of policy uh, creations over recent decades, and it's something that we can and need to reverse it. And uh, we've given that, that modest job to uh, Sarah Russell as our special assistant to uh, end homelessness to really be thinking at the systemic, that systemic level and uh, helping the city lead the, the effort that's gonna involve so many organizations, but which I do firmly believe the city must lead uh, to, to bring about that, that change. So with that, Sarah, thank you for being willing to step into this role at this critical time. And um, you know, this is really one of the first opportunities you've had to kind of give the broader public an opportunity, you know, a, a briefing and update on, on how you see this work and how it's going. And so I'll turn it over to you to share some more. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to everyone else who's uh, contributed um, to this announcement today. Um, as we think about homelessness, um, we have some current data up here on the um, on the slide that indicates uh, roughly 620 uh, folks who are homeless, and then we break um, groups of people who are unhoused um, down into subpopulations so that we can ensure we're um, not a pro not driving toward a one size fits all housing solution um, for everyone who is experiencing homelessness. Um, I will note something that's not on here that I know that's been publicized. Um, we do participate in a point in time count each year in January. It's one day um, for the whole year where um, work, work stops and um, service providers in the community count the number of people that they interact with on that given day to give us a point in time count of the number of people who are experiencing homelessness. Um, from January 2020 to January 22, we saw that number um, increase threefold, um, which is really interesting, right? So that's during the pandemic. Uh, we had an eviction moratorium, so there were not a great number of people who were entering homelessness. However, what the pandemic allowed us to see is allowed us to do is to relax our eligibility guidelines and not take such a narrow view of the state of homelessness and the state of housing insecurity for Vermonters, which we have historically done. So we had an opportunity during the last two years to, for the very first time, get a clear picture of the magnitude of need there is around homelessness and um, housing insecurity in the state. So we believe that's why that number increased um, is that it was, we always knew that it was not a, a perfect measure, um, but I, I think for the first time we have that now, um, which feeds into the goal of ending homelessness. And I think that, you know, some may argue as the mayor said, you know, it is a really ambitious goal. However, I think it's better to have a goal and work really hard to achieve it than to throw your hands up and admit defeat. Um, so I'm, I'm lucky to be part of and grateful to be part of the Chittenden County Homeless Alliance, which is a group of um, invested stakeholders and community members that comes together on a monthly basis. And in, in many cases, our subcommittee work, uh, those folks are coming together on a weekly basis um, to identify creative solutions. And that's what I think that the Elmwood emergency shelter community really is, is, an, is innovation. Um, what we saw through the pandemic is, you know, that not everybody could, we could house people in motels for a period of time, but that wasn't a great fit for folks. People could be successful in congregate shelter, but for a lot of people, that wasn't a good fit either. And this is our opportunity to, to really critically look at what we've done in the past, and implement a, implement a new solution around emergency housing. Now, to be clear, emergency shelter is not the answer to homelessness. It is a safe and respectful environment where someone can feel safe while they wait for permanent housing. 
um, as the mayor talked about, we do have a housing supply um, challenge. Um, I would argue that I think that housing supply is part of, um, is, is the third leg on that stool um, that is our answer in addition to uh, subsidy and in addition to services that people need to remain in housing. While we need to, of course, focus on um, the folks who are already unhoused, we also need to critically look at the reasons why they why they fell into that situation and be able to proactively address not only that inflow into homelessness, but the outflow to permanent housing. Um, so those are some of the key pieces that um, the Chittenden County Homeless Alliance is working tirelessly around a lot of really invested um, and engaged uh, community members, um, people with lived experience um, also participate in that group and provide feedback um, to policy and procedures um, and initiatives such as this project as well. Um, we sought the feedback from um, visitors to the community resource center um, around you know what what this what what this concept feels like uh, for them is this something that might be helpful is this another you know tool in our box to to be able to to ensure that people are un, are not unsheltered um, and a lot a lot of elements in this project were um, really pulled from those conversations that we had with people um, who have lived experience of homelessness. Um, the city has also, um, a, from a systems level, made an investment in the coordinated entry system. Um, and uh, we have uh, increased uh, staffing for that system. There was one, um, one person who was in charge of coordinated entry for our entire county um, up until this investment. And now we have 2.5 full-time positions based out of um, our wonderful partners of CVOEO. Um, it has yielded roughly um, connecting an additional um, 100 households to the coordinated entry system um, since that investment was made. Um, if we want to speak uh, specifically, I'll go back to touching on um, the uh, Elmwood shelter. We can I, we don't have to go back to the previous slide, but um, I think that one of the things that we heard um, around from the community and from um, our partners in this work is that ensuring that there are, is appropriate um, staffing and services and support available on site is really the key to finding success. Um, both success within the shelter and ensuring that people move into permanent housing, but also success in being good neighbors within within the neighborhood. Um, with that being said, in addition to um, partnering with CHT, um, amazing partners who are wonderful with property management um, and also have a really robust and intentional uh, resident services component to their program as well. Um, we will be partnering and actually have agreements in place to have of um, on-site recovery meetings and support from Turning Point of Chittenden County. Uh, we also will have um, visits, daily visits from the CVOEO's CORA outreach team that will be providing food, um, basic necessities and connections to um, low barrier resources for folks. Um, CVOEO will also be providing the on-site case management um, to ensure that there are dedicated staff at this site to coordinate services specifically for the resident or guests, excuse me, at this location um, to be connected to permanent housing. Um, additionally, we have an agreement in place with the Community Health Centers of Burlington um, and their mobile medical and mental health outreach um, team will be visiting the site to provide low barrier connections to folks um, around medical and mental health um, needs right on site. Um, and as you've heard a couple of times, there are offices um, for co and confidential meeting space located right, um, right within, within, the, um, within the gathering space as well. Um, with that being said, I think that I'll end with the one bullet that I didn't address on this, um, on this slide is that in the last uh, three in a three month time period, we saw 49 households permanently housed in Chittenden County, which feels like something to really be celebrated and in a time where we have a extremely low record low vacancy rate. Um, and we have a completely maxed out social services system. Um, this cannot be possible without the work of 
the Chittenden County Homeless Alliance's um, community housing review team. And I think while they're often overlooked, the just phenomenal work of the direct service providers who are breathing this every day. And, you know, I think we, you know, sometimes sit in offices and, you know, have these conversations around systems, which are so, so crucial. Um, but I think that it's important to recognize the direct service staff that are breathing this, living this, you know, right alongside um, the folks that they're engaged with. Um, so I think that's all I have uh, to share today. Thanks for the introduction, Mayor. Great, Sarah, thank you. Um, so speaking of one of those heroic uh, frontline workers who's out there actually um, doing the hard work in the field, uh, at one point, um, we, will, we will do the uh, uh, organizing out loud here. At one point, we were gonna hear from Lacey Ann Smith, um, but is Lacey, are we able to hear from Lacey Smith or? Not seeing her on the line. No, Lacey is not on. Okay, great. So um, that means we are at the end of the program. Uh, Lacey is our the head of our CSL program and it is doing a lot of that work from the city team. Uh, and uh, I did we had, had her on the agenda uh, at one point as we we're putting this together because I, I want people to know that this new uh, city invest that this new investment is going to work hand in hand with the new uh, investment in community service liaisons these social workers now working for the city um, and uh, helping to uh, uh, serve people who are unsheltered and, and sleeping outside overnight that team is gonna be very much integrated into the work uh, with, all, with all these other services, that team's gonna be very much integrated uh, into this um, facility as well. So with that, uh, we've been talking for quite a long time, a uh, lot to say. Uh, thank you to uh, my colleagues here for sharing all that. And we'll finally now um, open this up to questions uh, to members of the media if there are any. So folks who are a member of the media, you can raise your hand as Pat Bradley just did. You can also send me a um, text message or an email to get yourselves in the queue. I'll call on each one at a time and enable your microphone. So uh, Pat Bradley, I didn't enable your microphone. You can unmute yourself and go ahead. Hi, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes Pat, go ahead. Okay, hi, Mayor. Uh, nice you. to see you virtually at least. Um, I'm curious if there's an application process for potential residents, how they're chosen, and if they can apply yet. Yeah, um, there is not a process yet for that. Um, there will be, we're developing that, um, and that is probably a key part of what we have to do is work with the various organizations that are in contact with folks who are houseless and make sure we have a process of bringing people in in a, in a good way. You know, it's, we really are, uh, even as we wait here, it's still two months, two and a half months away. We hope that other people have other opportunities in the meantime, but um, you know, so we're gonna do the best we can to hurry up with that. Uh, but you know, we really have to develop that process a little bit further. Do you have an idea of what kind of priorities you're going to set for accepting people into this community? I, we have had some discussions about it. I think we've been fairly broad about the, those things. You know, we wanna make sure that people who come into the community can exhibit a certain level of their own self safety and security as well. That's a key part. So, you know, there are times when the folks who might come in who we say, uh, you, know, you really kind of need a higher level of service than the pods might be able to provide. Uh, but certainly we don't want to create barriers as well for folks to get in. So, um, you know, was, uh, I can't tell you, be, I can't say very specifically. I know we've had these discussions. I would, I would hate to tell you something, Pat, that I can't, that won't happen to, and after we get through this in the next few weeks. I'd rather be able to sort of uh, communicate that to the coordinated entry and other members about how we're going to approach bringing people in. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Pat. Um, 
Juliet, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi there. Um, thank you so much for going all through all of this. Um, so I know in the past, uh, the Champlain Housing Trust was approached um, to be in the management position, um, but I think for one reason or another, it didn't work out. So I'm wondering what has changed and um, that has allowed you all to accept this, um, this position as a management. That's a great question. Um, so I, uh, a few things. Uh, one, we, as well as other members of the community, thought that the co-location of the community service center on site was not a good idea. We expressed that to the city as part of a reason why well, we would rather that be separated and not part of this. And let me just say that we are working with the food shelf on the creation of a great facility at that location so that they can really work well. That's there's another group of folks who are doing real estate development who are right now doing the first phase of improvements to that property and the second phase to expand that property to make sure that that really works as a great facility. Uh, the feedback from the food shelf was it's working really well there, uh, but they need some more room. And so that's, that's why um, that was a part of, can we do that? It does that work. We wanted to get clarity about that, right? That's one. Uh, two, um, uh, although we feel we can staff up, uh, we have been challenged a bit on the maintenance side of things. And so part of our conversations with the city was that we really couldn't dedicate a whole uh, maintenance to this uh, activity. And so that was a second issue uh, uh, that we had uh, in terms of sort of the site. Those really, uh, and the third, probably just in, in terms of changing environment, we're seeing sort of an uptick in people who need work. Um, which is a good thing. People who want to work with us. Um, uh, that's still a challenge in many ways. It's not easy. Uh, we all know that. We've seen reports on how difficult it is for many agencies to hire folks. Our sister agencies like COTS and others who are struggling. Uh, but nevertheless, we felt like there was a level of confidence that we had that we can staff up and do this. So that change between the conversation first starting back in the winter to, the, to now um, and that has been a sort of like just a transition uh, for us. We didn't want to be able to sort of say uh, we could do this when we thought it was going to be nearly impossible to really manage it. Uh, a part of that was that we do have a lot of things. We got a lot of things cooking. Um, we have lots of projects that are in the works, both in affordable housing, permanent affordable housing, community facilities, and a whole range of another hundred units, as I indicated, for homeless folks. And so there was a lot of conversation here about can we take something else on as well uh, and we just need to get get comfortable and balance that out so those are the answers um, that, um, made sense uh, the reason why we're able to step up now you have a follow-up Juliet yeah can you hear me yes yeah. go ahead. okay great um, I'm also wondering if you all could provide a number in terms of how much you are being paid to manage uh, the pod site. I thought somebody was going to answer that question. I don't have the answer. What I could tell you is, is that we're, uh, we're, we're simply uh, asking the city to support us for the number of staff that we need. Um, and um, you know what, we are trying to pay people a little bit more because it is challenging work. Um, but um, nobody's going to get rich uh, on this one, not even close. Uh, there's a lot of time that's going in from CHT that is not not being paid, and and really it's just about the staffing, uh, security, uh, the cost of the facility uh, that are being paid for. Part part of the funds we're going to get part of the funds that go to other organizations to make this work. And I think maybe Sarah could probably answer this question a little bit better or, or Brian or, or Samantha. Yeah, I was gonna ask Sarah to speak to that and perhaps cast it into comparison to what it costs currently under the state, roughly what the state spends on hotel motel services, which doesn't come with the services. So if you could just touch on that. 
Sure, Brian. Um, I think that uh, we're, we are still in the process of honing budget. We are in the final, uh, you know, sort of negotiations around that. Um, CHT has been a great partner in helping us to determine adequate staffing and scheduling. The, the scheduling matrix that they've come up with is a, is a work of art, really. Um, so we've been really grateful for their um, insight and expertise around developing that. Um, I think that where we landed um, is that the emergency shelter will will roughly cost around $124 a night uh, per person. Um, and in comparison, that that would include the, you know, the site, all of the services, all of the staffing. Um, in comparison, we're seeing that um, as, as significantly less than the state's transitional housing program that um, is capping their um, uh, motel, uh, nightly motel fees um, around, I think it's $175. Um, thanks, Carrie. Um, so we are seeing, we, we will see, you know, that, that it is expensive to provide this level of support and security in addition to the case management services on site to help folks move into permanent housing. So this is not just, you know, the the sites or you know the 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 site and the management. It also includes um, services that will be on site and the um, dedicated um, service coordination and case management um, to the location as well. Okay, so is there? Um... So just so I'm making sure I'm understanding this correctly, um, there hasn't been a number um, for the amount that CHT is being paid to manage the site? I think there is. I just don't have it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can we can follow up with that. I mean, we're we're, we're we are still fine tuning, as Sarah said, making sure we have both the right amount, but not too much. And I'll just be a bureaucrat for a minute and say, CHT will be submitting invoices to us with documentation. So it's not just like, here's your check, good luck, we'll talk to you later. But it's really a, you know, it's truly a, a documentation driven system of here are our costs this month, we're requesting reimbursement. So that's how, that's largely how these programs go. And I, I think we respond that our budget is a response to sort of the both the zoning permit and the needs of the community in terms of managing it so that this is, we simply just created the, the sort of the response to what it was. And uh, again, Juliet, there's um, well, there's no there's no new boats being bought uh, for uh, staff here as a result of sort of this activity. It's going to be pay for the cost of the and the expense that we have in front of us. Got it. And one other question, if I can ask, um, do you all anticipate any specific challenges as you move forward? Well, you know, let me just say that we have operated a motel, two motels. We have plenty of housing that are uh, transitional in nature. We have hot house chronically homeless people. And uh, just like the world around us, there are issues that arise. Uh, no different, I don't think, than broadly the general community, a little intensive, a little bit more intensive because folks who are homeless are more challenged by a range of issues. And so, yeah. We expect that individuals will will have uh, great needs at different times. We we hope that there's a system in place. We have our intent is to have a system in place to respond to those needs uh, and to have that kind of like intervention if there are issues that arise. Uh, we're not um, we're not Pollyannish. We don't think people are going to come in here and suddenly you know hang uh, hang flags out and put flower pots out and start growing food and feeling you know really great about everything around them in the world uh, so we do know that there's work to be done it's work on a mental health basis it's work on uh, on a range of issues for folks uh, so those are those are real challenges um, people who are homeless and not are, are sometimes economically homeless but also they're homeless for a range of other reasons it's not one type usually there are groupings but nevertheless there are issues to resolve um, for individuals to work through and we've watched in our other properties, um, uh, small miracles. Uh, um, ninety percent of the time, ninety-five percent of the time, and every once in a while, uh, where people are not are failing, and that creates conditions and issues that we have to sort of uh, respond to. So, um, you know, that's that's we're we're eyes wide open about this. We get clarity. We have clarity of uh, and history of of uh, sort of the experience uh, and. Um, know that when we go into it, we'll, we're going to do the work we can, the best we can to make sure that people can be 
uh, safe and secure and successful. I'll add to that, you know, the city's made it clear that um, this is not CHC's work to do alone. Um, the city will, uh, when they're, you know, we've, we've had real successes with uh, downtown shelters. They, there's the fears about the kind of community issues they're gonna be create, create are often much greater uh, before we've opened facilities than when they're actually operating. That said, um, we know that we are going to be working with folks at this site who are having real challenges and, and we like we are not Pollyannish either. We, uh, I'm sure we will face certain challenges and when that happens, and we'll, uh, the city is gonna be there to work with CHT and provide the support that's necessary to address them, both for CHT's benefit, the benefit of the uh, residents, uh, the people living on the site uh, and, and the neighbors who we've uh, really you know, made a commitment to that this, uh, this new facility is not going to create major problems in their communities. So uh, we know there's work ahead there and we're all committed to doing it. Mayor, I thought this was another opportunity as well to highlight the community support liaison and the work of Lacey's team, ensuring that, that they are embedded in the police department, but they come with a social work, social service background, and their focus is to provide wraparound support for folks. So that will be an important component to be proactive, to identify issues before they become real big problems and prevent people from, um, from those issues escalating to the point where they need to be uh, for discharged from the site. We're trying to avoid that, but. Got it, thank you. Um, thanks, and lastly, we have, oh, um we got two more maybe okay sam i'm having trouble enabling your microphone because of the your computer so i'm gonna work on that and uh sasha you can go ahead with your question hey thanks so much appreciate it um just a quick question on the buildings that are on site, aside from uh, the the pod buildings themselves, the, these um, community buildings, obviously the bathroom um, and this other building. Do you anticipate having um, certain hours that that community building is open? Will it, would it be open 24 hours a day? I imagine the bathroom obviously would be a 24 hour per day facility, but what about the other building on site? I don't, I don't anticipate the building being open 24 hours a day. There will be staffing there and security 24 hours a day. So they'll be in the building uh, most of the time, I, I expect. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be a need for folks to come in and use the building after certain hours. We'll establish some hours. Um, we haven't quite done that yet. We will do that soon. Um, and basically said, you know, building's going to close at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock or something like that when staffing, I think, leaves. And, uh, we bring in some support for security and uh, otherwise. So um, that is typically how we run things. Uh, any kind of public public facility that some of our properties simply shuts down and says time to go home. Uh, so thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Sasha. Um, Sam, I'm sorry, but I'm unable to enable your microphone. You can type your question in the chat um, and please include who your question is addressed to. Um, if that doesn't work for you, you can also try calling in from a um, cell phone or landline. Um, so I'll give you a minute to put your question in the chat. Um, I'll also put my email in the chat and you can email any questions that you have. Mayor, if I could just take a minute while we're waiting for Sam, um, I just want to note that the city council has supported every step of the way, everything we've proposed for this project. Um, they've asked a lot of tough questions. They've asked us, I think, to ensure we're, we're, we're coming up with a plan that is both um, achievable and cost effective, but also responding to the needs. And I just want to acknowledge the council, but also Gary's, Gary's department has provided funding to the operations. So um, AHS has been not just there to support us, but with actual 
operations funding, which is critical. Thank you for well said on both points, uh, Brian. I think yeah, absolutely this has been, uh, I think the votes to um, move forward with this project have all been unanimous at the city council level. And um, uh, we appreciate that partnership on this. So I think if we have not heard from Sam through the other uh, routes that have been offered, I think we should uh, pull us to a conclusion here. We've been going for uh, uh, well over an hour. Thank you, uh, everyone who has helped uh, lay this out, who has helped been part of today's uh, very positive news, and who has been doing the work uh, to, to get us to today's announcements. Uh, look forward to further updates and, move, uh, as, and, and news as we move towards the opening of this important new uh, facility to address Burlington and Chittenden County's um, housing challenges in, in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you everyone for tuning in today. We'll be in touch again soon. Thank you.